All right, it's Ralph here with another OP.G analysis. And in this one, I want to show you guys Random Draven. And really, I just typed in Random Gold Player and I got this guy. So that's quite hilarious in my opinion. But let's get right into it. So this guy has a 51% win rate after over 300 games in Plat 5, which suggests that he's just about where he belongs to be. Usually when you climb, you first start out with a good win rate and then it sort of slows down as you get higher, right? So, it, which means that if you have 51% after such a long time, usually you've sort of hit your ELO, right? As you can see in Flex, well, he only has 24 games, but right now he's on 58%, right, in Gold 5. So you can expect that if he reaches 51 or 52% in Plat 5, that means that he slowed down and kind of reached the 50% level uh, in that ELO. So, that means you're doing something wrong, of course. Of course, you can also look at it this way if you haven't played a lot of games. If you aren't that experienced of a player, uh, it can be normal to just have this rate of improvement. What I do find very interesting is that this guy is Silver 4, Silver 3 and Silver 1. It took him an extremely long amount of time to climb through the ranks, uh, which can be because he didn't play as much. But even as you grow older, and gain more cognitive capacities for analysis and improvement, you should be gaining ranks. Uh, now, I'm not going to say automatically, but quicker than uh, usual. So, over a long amount of time, you should be able to climb out of bronze or silver pretty much just by analysis, by just critically looking at your gameplay. Right? So, if you look at this, he actually did play quite a bit of games in Season 4. And then we look at Season 5, and he played not as much so yeah the game volume thing seems to be right so my point stands that you should be looking to improve your gameplay and somehow that's not really happening as much but game volume seems to be his biggest issue he seems to have climbed to platinum uh, in this season although it did take him 300 games which is a lot so i guess you can see that natural level of improvement 300 games although that's quite a bit it's not uh, a really large volume but now let's just go into the actual Obadah uh, stats, right? Because this is just looking at like uh, his last seasons and his rate of improvement, what's up with that? I think that's pretty regular if you don't play as much. Of course, you don't have to play as much, right? That's, that's just completely up to you. Now in Season 7, you can see his Katarina has a 68% win rate. Great. And his Akali, 63%. Now those are both assassin mages, as you know probably, right? So you're just like waiting, 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 and then eventually just go all in and someone dies. And that works until a pretty high level. You can also play a burst mage like any, and that works to maybe diamond four, and then in, in that elo bracket people start uh, working around that. It takes a lot of skill just to beat that all in, but once you do it, what, what are you gonna do, right? Like, so. Um, Katarina and Akali, although very interesting, it doesn't really prove that you understand the game and that you can play it well. And if you look at the fact that how uh, high a percentage he has in those, it means that he has about a 45% or 47% somewhere around that area with his other champions, which is not a good sign. Right? It's a sign that he can only play those champions, and whatever else he plays in ranked in Platinum 5, he can't do it. So he's not really at the level that his elo suggests, right? Because uh, unless you want to one-trick Katarina to Challenger, you're you're not going to be able to do this, right? Katarina is quite strong right now, so you have to expand and really be able to play anything. Well, not literally anything, but more c types of champions than just assassin mages, right? Might be useful to first of all decide on a role because he's switching between multiple roles, which is rarely a good thing. Right, and, and it's it's not really working out. He's not practicing those rules very well. He's just uh, dabbling about, as I call it. So, there's nothing wrong with taking a role onto your list, but you need to be able to play that role and practice it until you get good at it. That's something I've struggled with personally, to actually, because once you start losing games, it's very hard to stay focused and practice, but that's what you need to do. Uh, you, you have to either not play it, or played enough to be able to do it well. Half-assing it is the worst you can do.
So you have to decide, right? You have to do one or the other. The middle is is is, is completely bogus, and that's what this guy's doing. Forty-eight percent win rate in Draven, right? So up next, I've um, found it very interesting. If you look at his KDA on these champions, now his Katarina KDA is absolutely off the charts, and so is his Akali KDA. Now look at his Draven KDA. Now considering that he's in in gold in uh, gold one platinum five elo. Uh, this KDA isn't great, obviously, but it's still positive, right? If you netted a 8 kills on average and only 6 deaths and decent assist count as well, what you should be getting is 55% win rate, especially since you're in the low elo so you can really out-macro people. You can really just by coordinating better with your teammates by spam pinging and all of that at the right times and coordinating with your support and you know, just deciding to shove a wave and ask him for to, to shove with you or ask the jungler to shove and take the turret or not. When you do these kind of macro plays, right, when you shift the top lane after you've taken the turret, all those kind of things, right, when you do that, uh, even if you don't get any kills, you should be gaining a lead on your opponents who are not as coordinated, who are not going to shove out the wave as quickly as you do and be able to back 10 seconds earlier and get that extra who knows, 50 gold, extra potion, boom, win a trade, right? Or you go even in a trade, you win because of the health, right? Those kind of small things up that win rate just a little bit. And you can see, if you have this kind of dog shit win rate after 31 games with that KDA in gold, gold, plat, low plat, um, your macro sucks, right? So from the fact that he gets a lot of kills in almost every single champion in, in, in that he's played and ranked, that tells me that his mechanics are quite good. He maybe he has to kind of reflexes down a little bit, right, to a certain extent at least. But maybe he dies a lot to ganks because he, that that's already quite macro, right? You already have to think about things like where the jungler is and do you want to push or not. Those are all more, already more macro level decisions, and that's probably where he really fails. Good mechanics, bad macro. That's what that KDA and win rate in combination tells me, right? All right, well, one more thing I want to look at, which I found very interesting, is that you can keep clicking the show more button with this guy. Show more, show more, show more. And it just keeps going, there's no end to this. Show more, it's just it's just a black hole, it just sucks in everything, it's just, you can keep doing this. Show more, 0%, 0%, 0%, 0%, 0%, 0 all right, that's it. We've reached the bottom of this cesspool of champions. I mean, really, look at look at this tail with all 0%, 50%, 33%. I've done a count, and he's played 62 unique champions in one season alone. 62 new, uh, unique champions. That's, like, what are you doing? And he it's not like he first times these guys and nails it. Right, which which would be impossible, really. But uh, so he has uh, 27 champions with a below 50% win rate, right? Out of the 62 he's played. So if he reduced that tail, not only would he drop a lot of these champions that have low win rates, the champions that remain, you practice more, right? You get larger game volumes on those, so you get higher win rate on them, right? So you get to a higher elo, right? So. Really, sometimes it's as simple as just making decisions with what champion you're gonna play. Like, like, well, I'm not a top lane main, and I've never played Nar before. Let's play him now. Let's see how that goes. Oh, I'm going one of four. I guess this wasn't great, right? And it's it, it, Nar is, is also typically one of these champions where, I mean, you have to tr track the jungler. You're vulnerable to ganks if you, uh, depending on what the enemy jungler is, very dependent on the jungler because it depends on if they can cancel your E or not. Right, if they can't cancel your E, you can just hop over them, and you, they have zero gank potential. But most most junglers have CC, right? Something like Shaco is less effective. But all right, that's that's enough for analyzing Nar. I'm just saying that because these of these champion specific things, right? You, it's just bogus to start playing all these different champions and all these different roles. It doesn't make any sense to me, right? Marksmen are the only role where you can play ten champions in one season and still do well because they're all so similar, right? Uh, with the with 
with the exception of Draven, whether you play Tristana or Ash or Vera, now Varus is already a little bit more specific. But let's say Tristana and Ash, auto attack based AD carries with some interesting abilities, right? But like you can first time Tr Tristana, if you're good at AD carry, you'll do good at her very first time. If you're a good top laner, but you have to learn Talon, right? You have to specifically work with the passive timing and the level 2 and 3 and level 1. There's a very specific mechanics to that. And you might not do as well the first time as you will the second or third or fourth or 100th time, right? So that's just that's just uh, my outlook on that. Don't play shit tons of unique champions with the exception of AD carry marksman, right? Like, that's, that's one exception I'll make. So... Just don't do that. It's 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 quite simple, right? Just drop the 36% locks after 11 games with a good KDA, which means you have dog shit macro. Same for Vayne, right? right? Uh, yeah, that's all I can make of that. So, a few interesting aspects just to recap quite quickly is, um, well, he only plays one very specific uh, type of champion, right? Not just mid lane, but very specifically assassin mages which are quite rare in the game right katarina akali i can't really think of other champions like that right most assassins are ad like set or talent right so maybe you want to expand that right like maybe you want to and 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 more more than that because all of his older roles sucks suck he should really make a commitment to stick with the role and then pick one off role that he really kneels down because not, right now he's playing all roles, all champions, and he's failing at all of them. Just build a champion pool with a few champions in your first role, maybe with your mains Akali and Katarina. That's fine. Maybe pick a third one like Ari, something more general, something with an escape, something that works if burst mages don't. Right. So you have three champions in mid. Pick an off roll and really start practicing that until you do it well, and don't play anything else before that. And certainly don't start playing 62 unique champions. Right? And yeah, well, obviously I can't look at the read plays right now, but you can you can bet your ass off that his macro plays quite bad. So that's something he should be focusing on, right? Not the mechanics, but when when am I getting ganked? All that kind of stuff, right? Where does the, where did the jungler start? Alright, what route does that jungler commonly take? Right, maybe look up the jungler beforehand, get used to, like, look at some VODs to determine his route. So, that's what you want to do, right? You want to start working on a macro. Alright, so, that's the first one. And now I want to compare that with the, uh, what's it called? With the OP.GG page of a challenger player. And it looks like I've actually deleted him. But here he is. I found this very interesting. Because you can do a comparison between the ELOs, and if you look at the average gold page and the average challenger page, you, you'll see huge differences, right? And, I mean, you could say, you could argue, well, that's quite logical, right? But I find it very interesting that the differences between players don't just stop in the actual game, right? They extend to champion select, right? The way that a challenger player approaches the selection of champions is different from that of a gold player just as much as the macro is different, the mechanics are different, the communication is different every single aspect of the game that has any impact that is different right so let's see we're going to get to season 7 and I click the wrong button hanging it hang in with me hang on yeah well, alright so gonna click show more and this is obviously why I made that point previously about when you can play a lot of champions I still feel like he's going a little bit wide here a little bit ham he's literally played every single AD carry in the game uh, as far as I can tell here he's played a lot of unique champions as well which is quite rare for challenger players if you look at this list it's still pretty long but it's not 62 that's the first observation He's played a lot of champions for a challenger player, which is not a good thing, and it's still not 62. And um, I'd say more than half of those are marksmen, 
who are very similar to one another. And that's one of the big reasons why I make an exception for this, why it's not nearly as bad as it looks, right? Jin, Caitlyn, Lucian, Ezreal, Kog'Maw, Ferris, Tristana. Yeah, you can play all those champions in one season and do reasonably well. All right, well, looking at some of his stats, I find this very interesting. Um, if you look at his average win rate, it's 52%. That is not extremely high. If you are a top-tier player, you can potentially get a 55% win rate. Sneaky gets 54%, but you have to imagine he's streaming, right, which probably does affect his gameplay just a little bit. It's not going to make a huge difference, but it's something to keep in mind. It can make that 1 or 2% difference, right? So, he has a 59% win rate on Jin after 200 games. Right, in Challenger probably, as far as I can tell. So that's insane. That's really good. But that does mean that he has to have a much lower win rate overall on his own other champions. So if you look at his other champions, if you did the math, right? So we have 236 games. And we times 0. Point, uh, what shall we do? Shall we count the wins, right? So he has... 139 wins with that and right so 139 wins 236 minus 139 is 97 so he has 751 minus 97 is equal to 654 losses and now we're going to calculate his wins that is let's see 813 minus 139. So that's 773, 74, right? Alright. And let's see, 774 divided by the total amount of games that he's played with those other champions am I doing something wrong here because that's impossible I must have done something wrong this is still loading by the way which I find hilarious alright so let's see 813 wins So that's 673. I just completely miscalculated that. Alright, so that's a 50.7% win rate. So, if you look at his win rate outside of Jin, it's 50.7%. So, I wouldn't recommend always doing these kind of statistics on random OP.GG pages, but I wanted to make a point here that it's about 50%. So if he doesn't play Jin, then he's just about an average AD carry master tier, right? Because you're playing on average against, say, master tier level players, right? If we look at this game, let's let's just open up a few games here. We don't want to open just the ones that have replays because we know those are good. So here's he here he's playing against a master tier Jin and a master tier Brand with uh, shit support for this Elo at least, right? And let's look at this. So here, Pobelter is the only challenger, and he's playing against four master tier players. And, you know, he's also the only other challenger in the game. So here's playing Jinx. He's popping off. Good for him. Let's see, what is he playing? Whoa. What? Is this a normal? Yeah, that's a normal. Okay, well, <laughs> let, let's skip that one. I'm like, what? I'm seeing gold five, silver two. What, what, what the hell is this, right? All right. So... Anivia kid, oh that's cool. Um, yeah, all master tier players, right? So in general, you're playing versus master tier level players, not challenger rank 50, because there's not enough players to match. Uh, you know, there there's not enough challenger top 50 players to match them with just other challenger top 50 players, right? So you match them with uh, anything 
to master tier, right? Like diamond one is pretty excluded here, but pretty big margin in master is pretty common, right? So that means that he get he is a, an average master tier player, right? When he's not playing Jin, and he's a quite high tier, almost godlike uh, mechanical god Jin player when he's playing that champion Jin, right? He's he's a challenger tier. So what that tells me, um, that's quite difficult because you can approach it two ways. You can say, well, if you reach challenger with the champion, it's good. But obviously, if Jin starts falling off, it's going to be bad. So what I'd say is, even though uh, marksmen are similar, he has to pick just one or two or three other champions and really start nailing those down. Like, if he just removed Kog'Maw, Varus, Tristana, Twitch, Ash, and started putting the fl play volume on Caitlyn, Lucian, and Ezreal, I would bet that he would get a higher win rate with those, right? Because he's playing that so many more times, he's getting so much more practice with that, right? That you're getting slightly better at that. And just 1% will do, especially since the overall win rate with these other champions is uh, subpar, right? It's just about 50%. So if you just removed all that, remove Callista, remove all that bogus, right? I think you'd be left with... Um, you know, a top tier challenger player, like he, he he could really do well if he just nails that part down where he reduces his champ pool just a little bit. But my o underlying point here, uh, apart from the analysis of this specific page, is that you can see a huge difference already with that gold player, with that gold player who just plays a shit ton, he plays every role, he plays in every role he plays five or more unique champions to up to ten unique champions in almost every role, right? Sometimes even more than ten, and then he doesn't play jungle.